guys, Banto here. Well, E3 is finally over, and now that it's been over for a while, I think it's safe for me to reveal my opinions on what happened during this year's Electronic Entertainment Expo. I have covered uh, E3 before, back in 2011. So I believe I can place my expert opinion on things. I've heard some people say that this year's E3 was quote unquote worse than last year. And in a way they're kind of right. E3 2011 produced some incredible games including Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Batman Arkham City, and Mass Effect 3, among others. After that many A-list titles all in a row, anything else is just going to seem inadequate. To me, this isn't a popularity contest. It is a trade show. The companies basically reveal to the public what they've been working on, what they are working on. Not to say E3 2012 didn't have noteworthy performances from most involved. Sony and Ubisoft had two of the strongest presentations at the convention, but for different reasons. Sony landed a one 2 3 punch of interesting original IPs, including the Last of Us, their new peripheral wonder book and the game Book of Spells from J.K. Rowling, and beyond, Two Souls from Quantico Dreams, the people behind Heavy Rain. Look, I, I want to help you, but you got to give me something, anything. Ubisoft was a different story. What they lacked for in substance, they made up for in style. I didn't say it was a good style, but it was a style. The briefing was hosted by actress and self-proclaimed geek Aisha Tyler and... And joining me today is going to be the internet sensation known across the web as Tobuscus. Tobuscus? Who's Tobuscus? Sad puppies would do. I'm sure she's got him on Puppy Prozac. That's cute. That's a synchronized puppy swim cute. All right. I'm going to be here backstage answering all kinds of updates uh, about what the internet folk are saying and also uh, talking about the stuff that people asked about before this whole thing started. And I'll have more sentences that I'll say faster. Uh, <laughs> gotcha, didn't I? That was great. Come here! Hunters, hunters. Oh, who's the man? Who's the man? My neighbors think I'm crazy. Uh huh. Someone should introduce that guy to Ritalin. I will admit, though, some of their banter was quite amusing. I think I just got Girlwood. Is yeah, you? yeah, well, you're, when you get wood, it's always Girlwood, buddy. Oh, oh, thank you. Both Microsoft and EA had a few noteworthy sure happenings. I, I want to go to the Hall of Fame. That's way too big of a meal to consume. It will overwhelm you. But what you can do is what I did, take little bites. You know, let me just bite off making the team first. And then let me bite off a few wins because we started 1-15. in 15. In absence of any truly unique original IPs, Microsoft needed to fall back on the tried and true with their popular franchises such as Halo 4. Splinter Cell Blacklist. Pulling the plaza. Looks like an armed escort just pulled you deep. Copy. Pressure targeted on your go. And Call of Duty Black Ops 2, among others. Anderson, we're on route to prom night with the president. Request establish overhead. Now, let me make one thing clear here. 
I am not saying any of those aforementioned properties are bad. Obviously, they have some merit to them. Otherwise, the companies wouldn't be bringing out new games. But I am willing to give extra props to any company who is willing to make the leap of faith and invest in some new IPs. Xbox's lone item of note would have to be the introduction of their new smart glass technology, which is designed to integrate devices. When devices work together to immerse you in entertainment. Yeah, I'm not sure how the technology is supposed to work myself. Uh, apparently, it's supposed to integrate all your devices through the Kinect, so you could be playing a game on your main TV and uh, watching a movie on your tablet or vice versa, or play a game and have your tablet display supplemental information, which you could uh, check for updates on your smartphone. Uh, hooked into my mobile device, which is being controlled by my tablet device, which is hooked into my oven, all while sitting in the refrigerator. What they said. EA seemed very sports heavy this year, touting out not only their Madden franchise, but FIFA as well, and announced a multi-year contract with the UFC. And then there was Nintendo. Maybe Pikmin really are all around me. Do you see any around you? <laughs> Perhaps under your seat. <laughs> no. Ugh. Nintendo, Nintendo, Nintendo. It was like they weren't even trying. With Nintendo, it was all about showing off their new Wii U controller. There's a familiar plus control pad and A, B, X, and Y buttons. Games featuring a deeper, more immersive experience will frequently employ the left and right analog sticks. Each has a button underneath, which is activated by pressing down on the stick. They did show it off. They did demonstrate its abilities, and it does look kind of cool. But their games were just so minuscule. They only had two games worth noting. One was Pikmin 3, and the other was New Super Mario Bros. U. Every one of the other games in their initial lineup are simply ports. Though, I will give Nintendo kudos for this. Nintendo is starting to embrace the mainstream games, adding a few AAA titles to their initial Wii U lineup, including Mass Effect 3, Assassin's Creed 3, and Batman Arkham City Armored Edition, just to name a few. Now, I can understand their need to embrace these, the mainstream games, but they're dealing with games that people have already played before. Well, Assassin's Creed 3 notwithstanding. But as someone once pointed out, they're using last year's games to promote their new lineup. And I don't really think that's such a good idea. I mean, nobody's going to want to buy uh, however hundreds of dollars it costs console just to play a game that they've already played before. It doesn't make any sense. Oh, and as for their 3DS lineup, 
Well... So, Scott, we've carved out a few moments uh, for you to do your 3DS thing here on stage. Have at it. Well, thanks. Thanks a lot, Reggie. You and I know a couple of minutes isn't nearly enough to say all the things I need to say about Nintendo 3DS. So it's a good thing I have my own show just for 3DS fans. It'll be webcast live at e3.nintendo.com. That's right, folks. They didn't even bother with them. Instead, they relegated it to their own online show. How pathetic. You know, I am firmly convinced that at this point, Nintendo has become elitist. They have lost touch with their fans, and any sort of humility they may have had has been crushed under giant dollar signs. All right, maybe I'm being a little bit unfair. Maybe not all of Nintendo is probably like that, but definitely Nintendo's America branch, that's for sure. I mean, to not even allow their 3DS news to grace the same stage as the Wii U. Ugh. Whoever made that decision should be taken out to a back alley and beat within an inch of their lives. Where's the love? Good question, Scott. So that's E3 2012. What do I think? Well, for lack of a better word, the press conferences just felt dull. They barely discussed anything new or original, and a lot of the games were just Studio. rehashed Thank versions you. of what they showed off at E3 2011. It just didn't feel like it was worth my time. The guests felt more like they were there trying to promote themselves rather than the games. Their relationship with video games was minimal at best, and they half the time it didn't seem like they knew what they were talking about. And overall, the E3 just felt underwhelming, especially when compared to last year. If they want to make E3 2013 better than E3 2012, then they need to do three things. One, they need to embrace more new or original IPs. Pre-existing properties such as Halo and Gears of War are okay once in a while, but eventually they're just going to get stale and people are going to get tired of them. It's kind of like Hmm. It's kind of it's kind of like cinnamon buns. They're good once in a while, but if you just keep eating them, eventually you're going to want something different. The second thing they need to do is bring out guests who actually know what they're talking about. Singers like Usher and Flo Rida may have songs in the dance games, but that doesn't mean they're invested in it. They should have just dropped Tobuscus entirely. I mean, he really has no relationship to video games, and his status as an internet celebrity is as about as dubious as a $5 coin. I mean, come on. The people at Channel Awesome have more internet cred than Tobuscus. And last, but certainly not least, they need to re-establish the passion they have with their product. I hear a lot of arguments about how video games are a product and they are trying to sell a product. Well, I think that's a load of bullcrap. If they were just trying to sell a product, 
They wouldn't be in video games in the first place. They would be in... They would be selling cosmetics in the mall. They need to show the people how much they love their product, how much they love their fans, and how much they... They need to show that it is more that their product is more than just a product. It is an art form. Yes, video games are an art as well as a product. And I think that is something all the companies need to either learn or relearn. Well, there you have it. E3 2012 is in the can. I guess I'll see you guys on my next strip search videos. And until then, don't be an ass. Play with some class.